Welcome to Joe for Jeff. I'm Jeff as always, and today we're going to be talking about a movie from 2013, Blood Slaughter Massacre. Um, it wins for best title ever. I think what they did is they just picked uh, three of the most popular words from horror movies, lumped them together into one thing. Now I've had this movie for a few months. Um, I tried watching it a few times, couldn't get for, through maybe 20 minutes of it, and I kind of put it aside. And then the other day, I was going through some blank uh, DVDs, and I found it. I said, you know what, I'm going to watch this, and I'm going to review it. So I sat down, and it's almost two hours long. Now for a slasher movie, that's like Gone with the Wind. And uh, it's a painful two hours. Don't get me wrong, look, I'm not going to recommend this movie to anybody. Uh, we'll start out with the plot. Uh, it opens up at this really big house party uh, for old people, so it's not that cool. Um, like 25 people there, something like that. And they have the usual shenanigans. Guy wants to sleep with a girl to get her, give her a job and blah, blah, blah. Then they cut to two officers doing a noise complaint on the house. They get there, they find everybody dead. One of the officers is attacked. Boom, they cut away. Now, what that has to do with the plot is somebody has killed everybody in a mask and a knife. Uh, they blame it on a fire. Now the killer has killed 23 people at this party. <laughs> I hate it when they do that in slasher movies where somebody kills like this insane amount of people. It's like, how do you kill 23 people at a time, up close? Because they find like five or six bodies in the backyard. Wouldn't you like kill one person and they'd all scatter and run away? Um, but I digress. That's just such a minor screw up of the movie. Anyway, it cuts to 10 years later and guess what? The killer strikes again. <clears throat> First time this movie pissed me off. First kill is this one girl walking home, I guess, from school or something. It's, a, it's night, and she's listening to a Walkman, and you just see um, a trench coat killer. He's got, like, a clown mask on or something like that. And he follows her, grabs her, ties her up, carves a pentacle on her chest, and then kills her. And he ties her to, like, some kind of playground equipment. Now you get to see boobs, which, I hey, I'm a huge fan of boobs. But then the next day... When the cops are talking about this, they're like, oh yeah, she was like 15. And it's like, no, don't, no, don't show me 15-year-old boobs. All right, I, I thought like To Catch a Predator was going to come out of my living room while I'm watching the movie. Don't do that. No, that's, that, that is not cool, man. Don't show me boobs and then tell me they're like, she's like 15. Okay, that's just wrong. Anyway, so they, get in, they, they show everybody. The two cops from the beginning are now detectives. One of them has a drinking problem. One of them is not... I don't know if this wants to be a slasher movie or a police drama. Uh, it follows the police officers way too much. Um, long story short, and it is a long story, like I said, this is two hours. Uh, the killer is, turns out to be some guy who was falsely accused of child molestation. He murdered everybody in the DA's office who was at that party in the beginning, and now he's going after their children. And they add in some kind of satanic element that he's trying to resurrect his dead daughter. Fine. But you don't care. This movie is so redundant. It, it, you don't even care about important plot points. You can't follow them. Don't even get me started on the acting. This is obviously somebody who just found a whole bunch of people you know, on their Facebook page and put them in a movie. Nobody can act in this movie. The video quality of this video right here is better than the movie. There are scenes that are completely out of focus. And you're just like, no, no, focus. Zoom in or something. And you can tell they didn't do the sound quality quite that well. They just probably recorded it off the camera because there's so much background noise and it drops in and out. You can barely hear everybody. Uh, there are a couple good things about the movie. Some of the shots they establish are kind of creepy. I like how they use the dark a little bit. And, you know, the killer just kind of pops up. And uh, the gore, not terrible. Not terrible. I expected way worse. Um, especially for such a super low-budget movie. But... The gore is actually pretty good. Um, they kill a lot of people in this movie. <laughs> Not counting the 23 in the beginning that you don't see killed. They must kill 15, 16 people. <laughs> now the ending takes place at this one house party. And you know how it is in a slasher movie. Anytime a group of kids get together, we're going to have the party of the year. It's a complete lame sit around on the couch party. And that's what happens here. Now here are some of the stupid things that happen there. Boy and girl go upstairs to have sex. 
Yeah, they do that. Bathroom comes back, finds her boyfriend dead, opens the door. Oh my God, it's the killer with a chainsaw. A chainsaw, yes, a chainsaw. And he walks in and chainsaws her in half after she screams really fucking loud. Nobody else hears this in the entire house. I'm pretty sure if you went to a house and started a chainsaw upstairs, somebody would hear it. Maybe if the other person was screaming their head off as they are being cut in half, you'd hear that. Another scene is a girl, they're in the living room, a girl walks over to the kitchen. The killer's there, of course. He then drowns her, but she screams, and then he drowns her in the kitchen, and then walks, drags her away. Nobody hears shit. Come on. And this is another one of those things where the killer, he's inside the house, he's outside the house, he's inside the house, he's outside the house. There's no really method to where he's killing people. He's just there when the plot tells him to be there. <coughs> Two of these guys at the party, one of them, I swear to God, is wearing a wig. Watch the movie. And I'll bet you he could pull it out. He looks like Michael Jackson in the later years because he's got like these mirrored aviator glasses and just big wig. And you're like, you recast one of the earlier actors to be in that role, didn't you? That's why he's wearing a wig, right? You wanted to hide that fact. That's my, that's my guess right there. Anyway, um, none of the characters you'll give a rat's ass about. Yeah, none of them. Um, I can't say enough bad things about this movie. Um, plenty of nudity, don't get me wrong. A lot of it. A lot of it. Um, but would I recommend this movie? Hell no. Like I said, it took me like four times before I actually just forced myself, sat down, and watched the whole thing. And I almost wanted to take a nap. It's just a lot of plot po points that don't have anything to do. I'm going to ruin the ending for you. Okay, they never have a reveal of the killer. He never takes off his mask and says, ha ha, it's me. No, you're just told who he is. The coroner, or the coroner's assistant, he's actually helping the killer. You don't really, you kind of think that at first he's the killer. No, but he is helping him. And it turns out that uh, the killer had a daughter and he was with the daughter, he was in love with the daughter and blah, blah, blah. And he's gonna help resurrect her. Yeah, it's a whole lot of nothing. So, as much as I love low-budget horror movies, stay away from this one. It had a cool cover on the DVD. I mean, I, I won't fault it for that. And uh, a couple of the kills were pretty inventive, but yeah. The killer just shows up, kills random people. There's a... Oh, here's one. They never tell you when this movie takes place, because nobody has a cell phone. And the other one is... One person, I swear to God, has a home phone, but it's a rotary phone. So it's like, okay, is this like the 80s or the 70s or something? But then cars are modern and there's other stuff and you just want to slap the shit out of this movie. Anyway, so don't go see this. I don't recommend it. It's not even one of those so bad it's good. It's just bad. And uh, yeah, I don't think I'm going to keep this one. I think I'm probably just going to toss the disc out the window and see who picks it up and which is bad luck on them. Anyway, I'm Joe for Jeff. Uh, please leave any comments below. Thanks for watching, and check out my other uh, reviews. Uh, have a great day.